And welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of In today's episode, we are discussing the 2023 World Championships. And let's start off with celebrating the first tremendous, amazing accomplishment accomplished by the USA men. Um, from left, let's start off with Koi Young. Your Modauer. Asher Hong, Paul Jula, Paul Judah, Fred. His name is Fred Richards, bitch. And the alternate, Colton Walker. His name is Colton Walker, girl. And today, they accomplished something that no USA men's team has accomplished since the year 2014, which was go to world championships and win a team medal. And let's talk about how um, important this is to the USA men's program. And let's talk about some people who this, I think, affects because in my book, this is your Olympic team and other people need to um, move out of the way. So, the Americans started off on floor. Floor was, floor started off really good. Floor started off really good. I think we started off with Yule, then we went to Fred, then we went to Asher. Then we was in a little bit of trouble over there on Palmer Horse where um, we started off with Yule, who did amazing. And then we went to Fred, who scored something like a 12.5. And everybody was looking like, huh, this doesn't make any sense. Like, how did that happen? Um, Apparently, he didn't get credit for one of his circling skills. So his start value was incredibly, incredibly low. That's something that we all kind of missed. I'm in the effort of learning men's pommel horse. I slightly have a slight interest in it, way more than I had before. Um, so that's a thing. And then we went to Koi, who unfortunately had a fall. So at this point, USA Gymnastics fans thought it was done a done data. We thought, you know, we've seen this script before. We've seen the men mess up on Palmer Horse and then it just went downhill from there. But what was incredible about this team is they have the leadership of your Modauer, and Asher hung, and they were like, we are not going to let this team medal slip away. Um, plus, what was happening is Team China found a loophole in the rules. So, one of their gymnasts got hurt. And they brought one of the guys from Asian Games over to compete. And China basically looked like a completely different team. After the first event, everybody was like, oh shit, China for the turn up. And they absolutely did. Team Japan were doing the damn thing like they always have been doing at this world championships and, and just serving serving the house down. But even off of Palmer Horse, I think they counted the fall too. So after two events, it was like China was in first, Japan was like in third, GB was like in second, and Americans was down in like fifth place. 
And again, like I said, as the USA Gymnastics fan, we've all seen this story before. We all know where this typically leads with the men in USA Gymnastics. So we was all holding our breaths. So then they went to rings. And we started off with, I think we started off with Paul, who got a decent score, mid-13s. Then we had Yule, who decent score, mid-13s. And then we had Asher, who had a decent score, 14. And then we was all looking like, hmm, that's cute, but but we have to understand pommel horse and rings for the men's are the two lowest scoring events. So for pommel horse, the men blew it. I think if the men would have did well on pommel horse, they probably would have came in second place here, but they didn't. But as far as rings, I think they did the best that they could do. I think for Team USA, we're just not strong on rings. We're just not strong on pommel horse, high bar for whatever reason, is a weakness. So, them three events, we just got to skip out. We just got to do what we do on our best events, which is floor, which is vault, and which is parallel bars, which is just exactly what this team did. So, then they moved over to vault. So, then my boo, Koi, he started off with his handspring, the male Rudy, which is the Randy vault. And it was real good. He had a little bit of a weird hop, but it scored a good score. Not as high as he scored in qualifications, which I think he scored like a 14-8 in qualification. He scored like a 14-6 something, which was good, which was good. I was bringing the Americans back. Then we had Asher, who did the best vault of his life and scored like a 15-1. And we were like, okay, okay. And then we had Paul, who did his... Man, Simone Biles fault, which is the Yurchenko double pipe. And he had a pretty large step, but he still scored like a 14 something. But our start value is so long. Finally, we were not going to worlds with 5.2 start values. We were starting at 6. Point, I mean, 5.6 and higher. And that's what kept Team USA in it. So then we jumped up to fourth after this rotation. Um, other teams did what they had to do. Other teams, it was looking like USA was solidly in fourth place, and that was cool. Us as USA Gymnastics fans was like, whew, fourth place. That's better than what we've been doing. Okay. So then we move over to P bars. And the guys showed up and showed out. Like they did phenomenal. Um I think everybody scored. 14.5 plus. And I think you'll score like a 14.9. So Team USA was sitting, sitting solidly. I think they were in second after five. China was was in third. But everybody was like, America's going to go to high bar. And again, high bar is a weekend event for us. And GB went to floor. So everybody thought it was going to be Japan, China, GB, USA. But the Americans had another plan coming. And GB had another plan coming. Because GB went to floor. And one of their top floor workers fell. And everybody else was just very bouncy and very, you know, happy around. Whereas the Americans did the best of their abilities. And Fred, instead of falling, like a, another American superstar would have fallen, in my opinion, in that situation. Fred had a big error, but... It wasn't significant enough. So I think his score would have been a plus 15 without an error, but he still scored a 14-5, which was still one of the top uneven bar scores of team finals. And Team USA came in third place.
So Japan came in first because Japan was slaying the house down the whole. Japan was serving the kids down the whole day. China came in second place. And these men, for the first time in nine years, won a team medal. Came in third place. Um, this is a triumph. Now I'm going to say something very controversial. Brody Malone, I think this team bronze medal affects you most because I think if this team would have done everything possible, they would have came in second place here. Even now, going towards the Olympics. They need somebody stable on high bar. They need somebody who can put up a great, significant ring score. And they need somebody help on Palma Horse. Brody, if you want to make this next Olympic team, that is the direction I suggest you go in. I suggest you leave let Fred, let Coy, let Asher handle the all-around position. Your spot is you would have to really, 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 really be fighting for against Paul and maybe Shane for that fifth spot. But I just right now, even if you were healthy for this team, I still would have picked this team over a healthy you, even though I know you probably would have outscored all of these men in the all-around. And USA Gymnastics would have done what they've always done. They would have tried to build a team around you. And it just wouldn't have made sense. Because, yes, you may have been the best all-around gymnast, but your gymnastics has holes in them. And as an all-arounder, you have to be able to be put up on every event. And that's just something that your gymnastics just was not given. And you're not a trustworthy gymnast. Like, look at Fred. Fred had all the pressure in the world for him. He could have lost the team bronze medal if he would have fell. He did not fall. He had an error, but he did not fall. That's just not your track record, Brody. Um, I'm sorry that your injury happened to you, but it kind of was the best thing that could have happened for Team USA because they had to find other superstars, other men to come in and fill in that hole. And I think Building a team around Asher and Fred is the greater strategy at the end of the day. And maybe even going in towards next year, Fred and Kai, Koi. Because I think they're the top American guys, Fred and Koi. Sorry, Brody. Oh, I hope you do get better from your injury. I hope you can, can I hope you prove me wrong. And my friend Danelle Wittenberg, probably my favorite USA male gymnast of all time. I just don't see it for you, friend. I just, you have so much difficulty. You have so much potential. You could have been that guy to help make bars finals, rings finals. You probably could have made vault finals. You probably could have made floor finals here. They just have broken you so much. And I'm sorry to say this. I'm sorry to say this, Danelle. But the way they treated you is a case study of how they should not treat Koi and Fred. And how I think because of the way USA Gymnastics treated you, I think they're going to have a whole different stance with Koi and Fred. And hope. And I, I'm sorry that it had to happen to you. But your legacy is USA Gymnastics fucked over one of their best black male gymnasts of all times. And they're never going to do it again. And they're going to hold these guys up as the kings that they are, the way they failed you over and 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 over again in your gymnastics career. I'm so sorry, Danielle. I'm sorry.